right, at this time we'll get the meeting to come to order with all members present. Uh, Superintendent Mr. Boggs, Assistant Superintendent Mr. Connolly, and uh, the Project Secretary Mrs. McFarland. The upcoming school board meetings, August the 8th, 2016, regular meeting at Minto Elementary at 6.30 p.m. <clears throat> and August the 16th, 2016, budget workshop at the administration office at 6.30 p.m. On September the 12th, 2016, the regular meeting at Minto Elementary at 6.30 p.m. and on October the 10th, 2016 regular meeting at Minton Elementary at 6.30 p.m. At this time, I will turn it over to Mr. Boggs for spotlight on the ballot. Okay, thank you, Dave. Uh, we have a couple of folks here tonight we'd like to recognize as new employees. We'll ask the board here in just a little bit to approve them. Uh, but the first person I would like to introduce this evening is Angela Parson. And Angie is uh, going to teach second grade for us next year at, at uh, Akron. So Angie, would like to stand? And uh, welcome, and uh, maybe you tell us who you are and introduce your family and anything else. Angie Parson, that's my husband, Ryan Parson, Alex and Luke Parson. They'll be in sixth grade this year, and then my daughter, Hannah, is not here, but she'll be in eighth grade next year at Valley. So. Now, Angie, what have you been doing the last few years? Working on getting my degree. Well, <laughs> you, uh, uh, you worked in the preschool, right? Yeah. How many years did you work there with Mrs. Adams? Six and a half. And while you were doing that, you'll work on your teaching license, and you got it. Congratulations. And I think you taught summer school this year, right? Of course. Yeah. Now, you're a Valley grad. What year? 95. 1995 Valley grad. That's not that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, guys, what do you think about having your mom teaching now? Are you okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're out of there. They're not in the same building. All right. Well, congratulations, Andrew. We look forward to having you. Well, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for coming with your mom tonight. For life. And we also have with us this evening Cassie Jensen. Cassie is our new director of marketing, public relations, and grant writing. And uh, today is her first day on the job. So if she, we threw a lot at her this morning, and she's probably still recovering from all that. But uh, Cassie, tell us a little bit about who you are. Uh, I am a recent Grace grad. I graduated Notice she says small town. Small town, yeah. <laughs> You're from Akron and Ben Tell them is pretty good size. We don't know where Danville is. I'm sure you didn't know where Akron is. Or Ben Tell. Or Ben Tell when you live in Danville. So welcome, yes, we're glad that you're here. I think that's everybody there is new employees. So uh, let's go on into the second one. And yeah, we'd like to share with uh, the board and public that we just received notification last week. In fact, Mr. Burkhardt, our athletic director, was notified by the IHSAA that uh, Tippecanoe Valley High School received the uh, exemplary rating for sportsmanship, sportsmanship for the 2014, I'm sorry, 15, 16 school year. So I'd like to congratulate our coaches, um, athletic directors, and obviously our student athletes uh, for earning that honor. That's means a lot. Yeah, that's important. So congratulations <coughs> to them. We also have some folks here this evening that we would like to honor. And uh, I've seen Wiles here. Is, is Mrs. Simons here? Mrs. Simons is missing action. Okay. <laughs> just saw her talk to the day. Okay. But, you know, um, three times each year we recognize uh, members of our support staff with the Pillar Award for Outstanding Support Staff. And these are people that, um, you know, work really hard and just don't get a lot of recognition for the things that they do. So this is our way of saying thank you for doing a great job and uh, just a little recognition from the board publicly and a little something for them. Um, first we have, and because she's not here, we'll go ahead and introduce her, but Cheryl Simons is the middle school athletic secretary, intended secretary. Um, I'm not sure why she's here, not here with us tonight. Unless her grandson back. has a football game this uh -huh. evening down south <coughs> somewhere, so they were following him to the okay. football game. So. Well, can't blame her for that. So the grandkids come first. So. All right. Um, Mrs. Simons has been with us for a long time. She started out as a, an instructional assistant at Akron years ago, and I think uh, has been at the middle school the entire time. And she's got the middle school's been here. So very loyal employee. Um, works a lot of our athletic contests, runs concession stands, just just a good lady. So 
I'd like to recognize Cheryl Simons, and then uh, I'd like to recognize Lyle Butt. And uh, Lyle has been in our transportation department how long, Lyle? <coughs> Twenty and a half years. And you were probably at the Started out in town. At school. <laughs> and, uh, so Lyle's worked on a lot of buses with a lot of bus drivers, a lot of parents over the years. Any thoughts on your, your time as, uh, was there head bus mechanic while? Anything you'd like to say? The new buses or just buses? Or just anything that you'd like to say? Anything, anything you want. Let's pass me again. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I just, if you had anything you wanted to say. See what well, you no, not particularly. I mean, uh, we've been really lucky, you know, over the 20 years. Uh, we've never had anything real bad problems. We've never had any real hang ups with the buses. And we've been able to, you know, go to Indianapolis and come back without so having to go down and get them and stuff. So, you know, we just, we've, had a, we've had a good 20 years here of uh, pretty good running, really. And you guys do a great job of maintaining our buses and keeping them safe for kids. Thank you. That's, uh, that's important, so we appreciate that. Uh, Lyle, if we can get you to come on up. Dave, I've got back here, Chris, and grab those uh, frame certificates, if you would. There's a certificate and a card there for each one. So if you want to go out here, Dave, uh, he's going to get a picture of you presenting that to now we're also this evening recognizing Michael Lukens as a world class teacher. Of course, Micah has been the uh, instructor at the Market Educational Center since its inception in, what, 11 or 12 years ago, Michael? This, this is, will be the 14th year. And uh, I don't think there's anybody around that would uh, not agree that Micah is uh, one of the biggest reasons that we've had a lot of success at Market. And many, many students have graduated from there that otherwise would not have earned a high school diploma. Um, so, Micah, congratulations and thank you for the great work that you do. And uh, thank you. anything you want to share this evening while you've got the stage here? Just want to thank everyone for their work that they do. It takes a whole community really to put together a program like we have at Burkett and the support that the administration and school board and principals have given has meant a lot to help the students who some schools don't give as much resources to and it does a lot of good for the community. Um, just this week's our county fair, and I've seen several former graduates who are doing quite well for themselves at the county fair, so that's been very rewarding. Yeah. Well, thank you, Micah, for everything you. you do. Thank you, Micah. Thanks, Thanks for everybody. Yeah. We have one retiree we'd like to honor this evening, and that is Wayne Landis. Um, pull his information up here. And let me... Um, read to you what, what Wayne provided for us. Uh, Wayne completes a 30-year career in education here at Valley. Uh, after graduating from Taylor University, he planned to teach high school math. Instead, he, uh, in the spring of 86, he accepted the position, uh, seventh eighth grade math at Mentel, and uh, Wayne says he enjoyed working with junior high students so much, he stayed with that age for 30 years. Uh, he's coached junior high basketball, football, and track. Also coached girls high school softball for several years. And uh, he says, honestly, he can say that no two days have ever been the same. I like this. While teaching is a very challenging career, it also it is also an incredible, or it can also be an incredible amount of fun. Um, you know, we asked them to talk a little bit about what they find rewarding uh, in teaching. And uh, Wayne says, among them are when a student who has struggled with a concept finally understands the concept and gets excited about understanding. Uh, he also finds it especially rewarding when a student states, you know, I never liked math until I had you as a teacher. And then when students come back after graduating and tell you that you've made a difference in their lives and that you have to keep teaching because they want their children to have you as a teacher. Uh, what Mr. Landis will miss most upon retiring from teaching are the students and his colleagues. We have a lot of great kids here at Tipton Valley and we miss the day-to-day -day instruction or interaction with those kids. I've also missed my fellow teachers and yes, even the administrators <laughs> that I have worked with over the years. Um, there might be a better group of teachers and administrators to work with in another corporation, but I can't imagine how that could be possible. We have an incredible staff, top to bottom, here at Tipton Valley, 
now I know most of us take for granted. Uh, when asked what he's looking forward to most upon retirement, he stated that he can't imagine leaving education entirely. He plans to be around substitute teaching and announcing sporting events. And then uh, just a final thought there, he wants to thank everybody who's helped, helped him over the past 30 years. Uh, when he had his accident 22 years ago, thought his teaching career was over, but that was not the case. Uh, teachers, administrators, friends all expected him without question to resume teaching once he recovered. He says there are not many places that would welcome back to their workforce a guy in a wheelchair like Tiffany Valley did. For that, I can never thank this corporation enough. It's been a wonderful ride. So, Wayne, we'd like to honor you this evening. Thank you for your years of service. And uh, I'm going to have Mr. O'Brien here present you with just a couple of tokens of our appreciation for your, for your many years here. I don't do. Uh, we want to try to get a picture. I'm glad you're not going to quit announcing. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that was not up to the Can we get you out there waiting for a picture? Is that going to work? I can so sure. At this time, if we have any uh, questions from the visitors, <clears throat> hearing none, we'll move to the consent agenda. Item 1 approve the minutes of the June 13, 2016 regular meeting and executive session. Item 2, approve the minutes of the June 27, 2016 CPF workshop and executive session. Item 3, approve the hiring of the following personnel. Myra Quinta Baca. Quintana Baca. That's good. You're close. Custodian at Tibigan Valley Middle School. Angelia Parson, second grade teacher, Akron Elementary. Greg Prater, freshman football coach, Tibigan Valley High School. Tim Meyer, custodian at Tibigan Valley High School. Veronica Bahena, Bahena, custodian at Minton Elementary. Cassandra Jensen, director of marketing, public relations, and grant writing at Tiffany Valley School Corporation. Brenda Marcelet, technology associate at Tiffany Valley High School. Item four, accept the resignation of the following personnel. Tanya Randall, custodian at Minton Elementary. And Aaron Kitzel, cheer coach at Tiffany Valley Middle School. Item five, Approve the termination of the employment of the following personnel. Angie Gass, bus driver at Tiffany Valley School Corporation. Item six, approve the facility use contract with the Beaver Dam Preschool. Item seven, approve the real estate lease with the Kosciuszko County Head Start Cardinal Center. Is there any items that the board would like to pull out? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? I'll make that motion. Todd makes that motion. Is there a second? Stand seconds. All in favor of approving the consent agenda is read. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item E, approve the claims and payroll. Okay. Thank you, Dave. We have one pre-written claim listing this evening. It's dated June 30, 2016, in the amount of $3,236,083.32. Our regular claim listing is dated July 11, 2016 in the amount of $145,218 and no cents. And then we have two payrolls this evening. The first is dated June 10, 2016, in the amount of $464,831.54. The second is dated June 24, 2016, in the amount of $431,137.25. I submit these claims to payroll for your approval. Hey, any claims and payroll? Is there any questions? Okay, now is there a motion to approve the claims and payroll as read? I'll make that motion. Brian makes a motion to approve the claims and payroll as read. Is there a second? I'll second. Tom seconds that. All in favor of approving the claims and payroll as read signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Financial report. Okay, you have the uh, nine reconciled bank statement and monthly financial report of funds for the month of June 2016. Uh, in summary, our receipts and disbursements are uh, total receipts for all funds, $9,629,206.99. The total disbursements of all funds, $5,473,949.95. Is there any questions on the financial report? Okay, none. We'll move to the old business. Item one, update on the Akron Elementary School project. 
And for that, uh, we have with us tonight Chris Wojcicki, Sir the Gilman Corporation. Thank you, Mr. Boggs. Thank you, Board. Oh, great, you got it up there? I've been on two of so thanks. Thank you. I can continue to make copies of these packets or or we can do it this way, however you guys prefer. You let me know. You can do it this way. I think just the updates. Now yeah, just up, this. up there, we don't need up packets like this. Okay. Save the trees. Well, <laughs> yes, sir. Every board's different, so um, I'll let Debbie know. Well, once again, Chris Wojcicki, Skillman Corporation, I'm the project manager. Jim Mitterling here is here also with me. He's our site manager. Brandon uh, Wolf could not make it today. Flip through, uh, take a look at some photos in the back on the master schedule. <clears throat> what I typically do is I like to read work plan for the next few weeks. Um, yeah, there you go, Mr. Bob's a few pages in. Um, complete. And you guys can go through the photos and the master schedule as I go through the uh, uh, structure here. So complete pouring foundations at gymnasium and cafeteria. Continue to prep site for unit D courtyard. Start to pour foundation foundations at D. Uh, we actually started the masonry block at unit B, which is cafeteria and gymnasium. Yeah, when you when you say unit D and C and B, you might okay. I don't know that they would know what the letters are. So. Okay, so unit unit um, <clears throat> unit B is the cafeteria and gymnasium. That's the structure completely to the east. Unit D is the north wing classroom, which is uh, you know the first and second K rooms, and then unit C is the courtyard and the admin, which um, that that uh, uh, grade work prep is following the next. So uh, Jim informed me today that unit B, which is um, the gymnasium, that block has started the masonry, so we're going to start you know, mechanical, electrical, sleeves, and things of that nature. Um, regarding mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, uh, they need to wrap up a couple temporary uh, power to our trailer. We're, we're hooked up, but to G&G &G and to D&D, &D, their trailers are out there and we'll install electric to them as well. Um, as I mentioned before, roughing electrical in the black walls at the gymnasium. As the block goes up, so do the conduit run up with it as well, and commence to understand to install electrical underground at Unit B, which is the gymnasium. As I mentioned earlier, go through and if you have any specific questions on the photos, just let me know. Um, I try to give a little brief description. Jim, I know you're accustomed to seeing these, but I'll share one with you in a moment. Like I had mentioned, that way at the back, there's a guideline schedule right now. We're currently on target. Um, we're really blessed with this weather for construction, maybe not for farming, but it's, it's helping us out. It's dry, soil's compact and well, it's sand. Um, and we're on target. I never want to say we're ahead of schedule. So that's when the bad luck starts. But we're on target. Any specific questions in the, in the photos or the guideline schedule? So Chris, the picture at the bottom there. Yes, sir. That's the gymnasium. Yeah, the cafeteria, yes, sir. Okay. So footings are in. You can't really see the footings. The foundation wall um, has the insulation on it. There's a photo, I think further up, Mr. Boggs. Yeah. I hesitated to put that one in there, but what that is, I wanted you guys to see the rebar. Everything gets tested on site by GMA, soils, foundation, uh, rebar. But that white piece of material is, is a sleeve. I never like, and, and actually I learned this from Jim years ago, I don't like when they core our foundation walls. So we tell them to put in a sleeve. You know, typically it's a few inches bigger than the kind of running through for electrical, sewer, storm, what have you. Um, when they start hammering and coring the walls, they could hit rebar and it just vibes breaks the whole wall, I'm not a fan of it. So this is the level of detail that you're getting on the project. So thanks for that many years ago, Jim. <clears throat> the stuff that they found underneath all got per, per, yes, sir, per unit. So as we're continuing 
to continue, you know, um, for the units, unit B, unit D, unit C, we're just continuing by, you know, finding a clay tile, yeah. uh, garbage soil, you know, nothing that's, you can't compact it, it's just the muck, it's nothing you want footings to sit on. So as we're going, we're hogging it out. Um, Mr. Bob, do you want me to touch on some cost on that, or I don't, um, I don't want to interrupt your structure here? No, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Leading into the next segment here, um, on those unsuitable soils. So we're hogging out uh, the unsuitables, and we've got you know a yardage, and we're just taking it unit at a time. <clears throat> and right now, uh, for unit B, which is the cafeteria, and parts of C, the courtyard, and parts a little bit of part of D, which is the classroom, um, we've removed and replaced back the suitable fill material. It's, it's uh, about 156,000 in, uh, in material. And that gets compacted and tested daily. I mean, GME, you know, Jessica, I send you the GME reports and uh, their cost as well. So Jim monitors it, GME monitors it, G and G monitors it. Uh, <coughs> our other site guy, Brandon, he washes it. So you're, you're getting a fair deal uh, of the quantities being taken out and being brought back in. And rest assured, footings are all on solid bearing. And Chris, just for the, I guess, the media folks that are here tonight, yes, sir. Why, has, why has so much of the dirt had to come out? I'm sorry? Why has so much of the, the, the previous dirt had to be removed? There's just, like I said before, it's unsuitable. Um, you know, a structural engineer deems it unsuitable. It doesn't meet the PSI, the pounds per square inch per square foot that we're achieving for our footings. And uh, you know, theoretically, your, your footings cannot bear on it. Because it's organic. Excuse me. Over time, it might be sound now, but as organic does, it slowly decays, slowly decays, and then before you know it, structural cracks appear, etc. Not just in concrete, but in masonry, blocking, and, uh, and brick. So. I don't think like any of us were surprised by that. No, and Mr. Boggs, if you could recall, we did soil borings, and the soil borings showed it. The contractor saw it. We did we did additional test pits. And the test pit, you know, boring sleeve is probably that thick, four to six inches round, goes down to the limit, thirty something, forty feet, whatever it is, comes back up, and then they technically dissect it. You know, peat moss as an example, water, what have you. Well, <clears throat> soil borings aren't every six inches on center. They're here, there. We structurally place them where your footing's going to be, where your slab's going to be, where your heavy kitchen equipment's going to be, but they're random. So with G&G, &G, which did not charge for this, we did test pits of deep, you know, the, the actual four-foot bucket, and we dug down. And in between borings, we found even worse soil. So in some cases, the soil borings might have showed in the data report, you know, in the log, it might have shown four foot. Well, the test pit next to the boring, Show eight foot. You know, a couple spots as we talked at the progress meeting, we found nine feet up near the building. So, um, contractor gave it a best guess, <clears throat> and that's all we can ask him to do. Fair is fair. So, Chris, the soil that's been removed, where, where did that go? That is going to town for a future ski slope, I believe. A future sled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So prior, prior to, just so everyone's aware of how fair everyone's being, prior to the sledding slope at the town, we have locked in a unit cost with G&G &G and Kimmer, and that unit cost has stayed consistent, it hasn't paid. So it's gonna be locked into the whole project. Every time I give an update, eventually it'll stop when, when the building's up, but as soon as we continue to move on through other units, you know, D, B, A, C, and some parking lots where we'll continually bring uh, this cost to be plugged into the uh, standard pay applications for GHGs. You might, Chris, talk a little bit about the uh, the, or the detention pond back there with the plans for that. Thank you. So we completed the uh, detention pond. <clears throat> However, it's holding water. Whether, I don't want to say that we're seasonable high water table because it's been bone dry. Um, if you look on the southern tip, 
to this eastern southern tip. Yes, sir, right in there. Uh, yeah, this way. I wish I had my point. Yep, right in there. After the progress meeting, it was it was dry out there. It's been warm for weeks now. You can still see water trickling in, and it hadn't rained for a while. So, in that area, there's a higher water table in that area. So it's it's getting more water. Therefore, we can't put our um, black dirt or our organics at the bottom of that to line it to grow grass. So <clears throat> right now we're getting with this. Uh, civil engineer on what options we have. Um, you want to line it with concrete? I don't recommend it. Um, you can't leave it like that. We wanted it for it to be able to get mowed. It's such a, you know, it's not a steep slope. Um, talked about possibly putting um, some native plants or flowers in there to get the grow. So. The civil engineer and, and, um, and the architect are getting together and looking at some options. So it does not stay water filled. Now I would say it's a few inches, Jim. Right now the, the water is about, well, it's, it's flowing out the, uh, <coughs> the north, north outlet. end. You mm -hmm. see the orange spot there, that's the outlet mm -hmm. for that area. And uh, the water is actually about six inches deeper than the uh, invert or bottom of that of that time. So that's, and it's just stayed there since we dug that out. So, uh, that's the reason we need to do something with it. Yeah. There have been several options. To and we looked at the option of dropping it, but therefore you're going further down, you're going to get more water. Um, we can't lower the either to the south pipe or the north pipe because that just messes with the whole inward elevation 3,000 feet to the north. So. It is unfortunately it's just a pocket of water. Will it ever dry out? And we've had two or three fairly large rains. Yes, sir. Since the drainage has been put around the north side of the school, right? Yes, sir. And yep. I think that area has drained pretty quickly. Yeah, it has. Yes. And yeah. we had that two-inch rain. And yeah. I went over there when during the rain, and I thought, man, we'll never work tomorrow. <laughs> There's a lake over there, but it's gone now. Later. Yeah, Brandon, our other site manager, pulled up was gone. Yeah. So, from what I hear, the horror stories that west side would like that. We bet all that time with the uh, number eight stone, so that's kind of a, a route for we wanted to get into and work its way to the, the pond. Well, that's why we strategically, on the schedule, have put that pond to go in first. It'll help us with the site. Eventually, it's going to pour pretty good. It's going to rain, rain, rain like it always does. And right now, our guys are uh, structured to just keep working with access roads around the whole perimeter, um, dewatering. We have dewatering covered. We, we have temporary heat, temporary enclosure covered. So they're going to work through winter. You know, we don't anticipate any stoppage. Mm -hmm. Might add that we do have unit B up to uh, minus 10 inches of uh, finished power. And uh, tomorrow or the next day, kind of finish the unit B. We've been hauling in the fill for days and days. Yeah, we're real fortunate to, I mean, at our office when I share with Dion and Scott, when they see this progress, they can't believe it. Uh, it helps out when we have the bar will take five miles or whatever it is down the road. So. And a lot of trucks. And we've got a guy, a contractor there that works through lunch. They, they trade off operators and they, they keep the trucks rolling and the equipment running. So that gets these jobs done faster. Yeah. If I may have another second of everyone's time, um, there was a it's credits, and I'll normally talk about some cost here as we continue. But, um, there's a casework credit. It's $200. Um, contractor had given us another credit for some other casework, but we didn't, we didn't feel that the credit was fair. So we told him, buy it, and we'll install it wherever Chrissy wants. Um, and the, the other, this $200 credit that I want to present is in the uh, cafeteria level storage room. There's no need to have that casework in there. <clears throat> I think we were okay with that. The other credit we found with Barton Covilma. There was some um, handrails 
in the mechanical room. Pretty fancy handrails. Really don't need that for the back of the house. Um, so we just made it obviously OSHA compliant toe, kick, mid rail, and guard rail, 48 inches maximum. And that was a $3,300 credit. That's all I had. I think it is. I think I can say that we've been very pleased thus far working with Chris and Jim. Thank you, sir. And their team. Uh, Thank you. They've just been very responsive to any any needs that we have. And Chris, we can reiterate that. And uh, especially want to recognize Puff Play G and G executing. Yeah, absolutely. They they've been a really good partner in this. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. we're very thankful to them for the work they're doing for us. It's a good project. Thank you, sir. Anybody got any questions for Chris? No. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then we move to item two. Approve the addition of school bill policy. Okay. Yeah, we've got uh, two policies here that I brought to you last time around. The uh, first one is the materiality threshold. And uh, if you want me to go through that again, I can. Um, if not, uh, we need looking for approval for that tonight. I'll make that motion to approve the material threshold. Brian makes a motion to approve the materiality threshold. Second. Why not second that? Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the materiality threshold, so the fellow say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item three, the collection of forgiveness of debt. Yes, that's a, another policy that I brought to you last time that, uh, again, it's recommended. Right by the State Board of Accounts that uh, we need to request the board to approve that this evening. Anybody have any questions on that one? I'll make a motion to Stan makes a motion to approve the collection of forgiveness of debt. Is there a second? A second. Brian right, seconds. Questions, comments? Hearing none. All in favor of approving the collection of forgiveness of debt signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Is there any other? No, that's all we'll business. Business we business to have. We'll move to new business, approve the following grants, the DECA Foundation of the Akron Elementary Makerspace for $5,078. Now, Andrew Michael is our media specialist uh, for Akron Elementary School. She wrote and was awarded a grant for $5,078 from the DECA Foundation, the Akron Elementary School Library, and uh, she's, the title of the grant is called Makerspaces Reinventing the Library. It says maker spaces are creative DIY spaces. Mm -hmm. What's DIY, Mr. Conway? Do it yourself. Do it yourself. <laughs> All right. Pass. <laughs> no question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, spaces where people can gather to create, invent, and learn. And uh, I don't know, those of you that know Andrea know that uh, there's not too much grass that grows under that young lady's feet. She's a go getter. <laughs> and we'd like to thank her for. The initiative to go yep. go after those funds, and I'm sure she'll do some great things with it. So, would ask the motion to approve that uh, grant. I'll make your motion. Tom makes a motion to approve the grant. Is there a second? Second. Todd seconds that. All in favor of approve, approving the grant from the Deco Foundation, the Akron Elementary Main Sakers, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item two: the initial consideration of a revision to the school board policy on pest control. Yep. Uh, during a, re a recent pesticide application training session that uh, Todd Glenn, our maintenance director, attended, the recommendation was that our current pest control policy that we adopted back in 2001 be updated. And really, if you look at the old policy and the new policy, the <coughs> only difference in the two policies is that the written record of any pesticide application at any school site must now be maintained for two years. So um, I have given you copies there of the, the new policy and then the old policy as well for you to review. I uh, will bring that to you this month for your initial consideration and then bring it back to you next month for approval. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Okay, we'll go to item three, initial consideration of addition to the school board policy review and second audit of free and reduced lunch hours. Yes, this would be an addition to school board policy. Uh, the State Board of Accounts is recommending that school boards adopt a policy on reviewing and auditing its free and reduced lunch applications. Uh, the purpose of doing a review and or second audit is to be sure that the required information is correct and the process is being followed correctly and accurately. Uh, 
the State Board of Accounts is recommending policy and implementing the policy as best practice accounting and auditing procedures. And I have, I have given you a copy of what they have recommended that, uh, that we use. Is the second audit something that we pay for? Uh, we do that ourselves. Okay. Yeah. It's just outlining the procedure to right. how we do that. Do you have any other new business? No, don't. Do we have anything? Hearing done, then this meeting is adjourned.